Bob Keller here with additional information on using Improviser to edit lead sheets. So let's suppose now that we open a new lead sheet, in which case there will, no, will not be any chords. Instead, we will see NC, which stands for no chord. And let's suppose that we want to enter some chords. So as an example, we'll take a B flat blues and enter it the chords for it and I'll show you how to then do some more editing over that particular progression. So we'll go up to the text entry field, type in the first chord, let's say B flat seven, and then to start a new bar, we'll use comma as the bar separator. You could also use the vertical bar if you like, but in most keyboards at least, the comma is a more convenient uh, thing to stroke. So B flat seven, go to E flat seven, and then back to B flat seven for two bars. So if I leave a, an, a bar empty, that simply means to continue the, the chord from the previous bar. Okay, so there we are with the first four uh, bars. And at this point, we could press enter and get the chords to appear on the lead sheet. Or alternatively, we can continue on where we left off. As long as the cursor is on this first point, when we press enter again, we will simply overwrite these chords with additional ones. So let's continue on to the next four bars. Let's go E flat seven two bars, and then back to B-flat seven for two bars. And now for the final turnaround, C minor seven, F seven, B-flat seven, and then let's add uh, F, F seven sus to uh, turn around to the beginning of the tune. So that will be our progression, and now when we hit return, we see that there are 12 bars filled in, and we can listen to those. Okay, so we're not really hearing the chords very pronounced, so I'm going to turn up the volume on the chords and play that again. And actually, I'll turn up the bass a little bit too. That's about as loud as I can make the chords right now. And since this is a 12 bar blues, we actually have 72 bars in our lead sheet. What we want to do is truncate this lead sheet to 12 bars. So we'll type in 12 as the number of bars, hit return. And we should get truncation to just 12 bars. Okay, so in, our, in the Initial video, I showed you how to click in notes. And then play them. Notice that the default is eighth notes. Let's suppose that we want a eighth note triplet instead of straight eighth notes. So you'll notice that the brackets indicate that the beats are being subdivided two ways. So to change that into subdivide divided by three, 
we can take our selection and press 3, and now we have three subdivisions, which enables us to make a triplet. <coughs> to move this over, we can just grab it, move it over like that. This is the sound that I was really trying to get. Now another often asked question is, supposing we want to uh, shorten the duration of the note. For example, let's say we don't want, really want this note to hang over the bar. So what we do is we use the, we select that slot and remember that to select a single slot you hold the shift key and click twice and that selects the slot and then what we can do is replace that note with a rest so we press R we get a rest there and notice that that rest that we got is merged in with the rests that follow so here is what we have so far okay now let's take that little that little riff and let's uh, use the first part of it to extend uh, the the tune in bar in bar three. So what I'll do is I'll copy it using Control C and then I'll paste it using Control V and I want to put in something different here as the response for for bar four. Okay, so that part will be, so in order just, just to play that part of the selection, I'm just going to hit return rather than uh, I or play as I was doing before. Okay, and then once again, if I want to shorten this note that's hung over the bar, I'll press the rest again. So what we have so far. And let's go on and add a little bit more to a little bit more to our tune. then copy the first part of our little riff one more time, paste it down here, and then continue on with yet another uh, motif. Finally, try to finish off this little uh, chorus. So, as I'm typing these, I'm thinking about the melody that I want. I want to uh, hear. Let's play the whole thing. Okay, 
So going back to the triplets that we had up here, let's take this measure and let's uh, make it a little fancier by making some 16th notes. So that for that purpose, we need four subdivisions of the first beat. Put in one more triplet here. Okay, so it's a little bit more embellished than what we had had before. And now, if one wanted to, let's say, remove a note, so there's two ways. Two different um, strategies there. So here we have a note and it's followed by the same same pitch. Let's say we wanted to tie this note over the bar line. So what we do is delete this note and the the note that precedes it then would be, would be used to fill in the space that's left. So unlike a rest we're actually extending the previous note and I use the X key to accomplish that. So let's hear how that sounds. So that's the idea of the X key versus the, the R key. The R key would put in a rest. The X key just deletes the note and extends it to the previous note. And you might ask, well, what if we press the X key when there's a rest there? And so rests essentially are treated as if notes. And so de deleting this rest will, again, extend the previous note into that space. So there's a variety of ways to get to for some particular effect. But one never has to explicitly tie notes together. That's always accomplished by uh, editing out a note that follows or one that precedes.